Hello. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, people of God. You shall be empowered today. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Amen. Wherever you shall be watching from, whether the replay, whether on YouTube, whether on Periscope, wherever you are, you shall be empowered today for these moments that we are together. Come on and invite some of your friends who you believe uh, may be interested. Hallelujah. So come on in. I'm going to jump in and jump out. Glory to God. Come on, let's get in here. Let's get in here and take care of some kingdom business. Amen. Hey, everybody. God bless all of you. You are blessed. You are blessed. Every time I pronounce the blessing over you, say, I receive because... We are going to revoke the curse. Hallelujah. Hello, Sister Julie. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming in. Come on, people of God. Receive the blessings today. I'm going to give you some information. I'm not going to be with you long right here because tonight we're coming back to deal with relationships today. So we're going to go in and give you some empowerment. Amen. Because... I believe this is your year. I believe this is your year. Amen. And how it's going to be your year, you're going to get knowledge. Amen. You're going to get empowerment so that it can be the year that God wants it to be for your life. Hallelujah. Come on. The spirit of the living God is here to show you some mysteries, to help you to get clarity, to help you to get understanding. Amen. So we want to... Uh, wait for a few more people to jump in. God bless you, Sister Betty. God bless all of you uh, that have come in the room. Hallelujah. We're going to be here. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Come on. I'm getting ready to show you some things I want you to know. Amen. Yeah. Get that knowledge. Glory. It's power. Yes, yes, be addicted to knowledge, be addicted to gaining, amen, advancement in your life so you can achieve greater things, and so you can operate with a, a more superior weapon, amen, you need superior weapons, we all need superior weapons, no matter what level you're on, no matter what dimension you are in, hallelujah, we all need something else from God, come on, invite your friends, we're getting ready to go somewhere, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on if you love the Lord. Come on. Come on if you love the Lord. Come on. Come on. Just let him know that you give yourself a way to be used by him. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. We invite you in the place tonight. We invite you in the room tonight. God. Move by your power. Move by your spirit. God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Touch somebody right now who is listening in. Come on, no matter where you will hear this from, we're getting ready to go in with some teaching. I know you're going to gain a, another level, hallelujah, in your life today. I'm always coming in so that I can, amen, give you something, a deposit that will cause your life to go, hallelujah, in a higher realm, at a higher speed, hallelujah, we need speed, glory to God, we need speed, come on, the American church needs speed, hallelujah, come on, we gotta get up, we gotta get up, we gotta go in the realms of glory, come on, God is waiting for us, God is waiting for us, he's waiting for us, you think you're waiting on God, but God says, I'm waiting on my church, come on, hey, 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 come on, Come on, get yourself ready. We're getting ready to go. Come on, invite your followers. Come on, let people know the woman of God is on and I'm coming to drop some things to you. I may even delete this because, listen, it's just not to go all over the internet. At times, it's only for those who jump in with me. God will give you a special blessing because you jumped in. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because I don't believe in casting my pearls. Glory to God. They cost a whole lot. Yes, yes. They cost my life. Hallelujah. And so this is for those of us, amen, who know that 
We can't remain the same. We can't stay where we are. We can't remain the same as we were last year. My God. We cannot even remain the same as we were in the month of January. My God. We need to take on speed and go up. Come on. I'm going to give you some knowledge here in just one minute. 60 seconds. We're going to jump in and I'm going to jump out. We're coming in. Amen. Tonight to help marriages. Amen. Uh, we're going to give a lot of information. We're going to give real experience. Uh, we're going to give a real understanding so that you can be able to apply them in your life. Amen. And your marriage uh, will be blessed by God because we want to see marriages make it in the end times. They are under attack. And so tonight, even if you're not married, I believe that the information will bless your life. Hallelujah. So tonight we're going to talk about the steps to breaking the curse. And like I said, I'm only going to be on for a few minutes, but I believe that those of you who are serious, you'll hang in there with me. Amen. Give me one second, guys. One second. You gotta break the curse. We have to break the curse. Come on, guys, invite your friends. I know who I know which one of my friends be inviting their friends because I go and look at their pages and I see. I see who's really for me and who's come to get my info and run. Come on, guys. Let's do this to help the body. Oh, oh. All right, let's do this, guys. Let's do this, all right? Come on, just worship the Lord. Come on, if you love the Lord, yeah. We have one moment for this. Come on, let's just wait one more time. Listen, I need to at least get... A few more people on with me because so many people come in my inbox and they want to talk and they want to, they want me to give them a whole bunch of information, but I'm here to give it. And so listen, my time is very limited. So I need you to be able to come on in so that I can help your life move forward. Amen. If you receive the oil on my life. You will move forward by fire. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to tell you things that I didn't hear. I'm getting ready to tell you things that for many, many years, I never heard it. I never heard it. And had I had the knowledge, I would have been much further than I am today. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. We need a few more people in here. We need a few more people in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Lift your voice to the Lord. We give God the glory, oh God, yeah, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, God, you're so worthy, God. We just invite you in this place, come on, invite the Lord in your space tonight, come on, come on, just give him, my Jesus, give him some worship, come on, give him some worship tonight, yeah, come on, just open up your mouth, it doesn't matter how you sound. I know, I know people sound bad because they can't sing. I, you know, I can't sing, but I know that the Lord loves my voice and he loves your voice. Come on, lift your voice to the Lord. Yeah, come on. My God, we love him tonight. Come on, if you love him tonight. Oh, we give ourselves to the Lord. My God, my God, my God, my God. Yeah, oh yeah. I give you glory, yeah, I give you praise, oh Lord, woo, he's been good to me, he's been good to me, he's been good to me, yeah, yeah, Lord, oh God, oh God, I just love the Lord tonight, I just love the Lord tonight, I love 
love him more than anything. Come on. If you love the Lord, just tell the Lord that you love him tonight. Come on. Give him praise. Give him glory for what he's going to do in your life tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless all of you who are jumping in. God bless all of you who are jumping in. Praise the Lord. Now, let me cut this down so that we can go forth in the teaching. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, now, the steps to breaking the curse for real. A lot of times in the body of Christ, especially in the Western world, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep saying that and I'm going to keep saying that for a reason, especially in the Western world. We are a day late and a dollar short. And the reason we are a day late and a dollar short is because uh, we have a we, we have a shortage of uh, teaching in this particular area, because so for so many years, people. Uh, didn't believe that a, a Christian can have a curse. For so many years, people did not believe that a Christian can have a demon. Uh, for so many years, they taught against it. I heard it. It was preached to me when I was a child. Amen. I heard all these different things. And so I believe them because our belief system, my God, our belief system is formed by what we hear, by what comes through our ears, amen, by what we are told for countless amounts of years. So we develop a belief system. And so it does not really matter whether the belief system is truth or false, amen, it's a belief system nevertheless, right? Okay, so because we hear things, we begin to accept them as our truth. They're our truth, but it does not mean that it is the truth. My God. We make it our truth, but it does not mean that it is the truth. Because the spirit of the living God is the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, he will breathe his spirit upon and he will reveal to you what is true. So you need to be searching for truth. Who is truth? The Holy Ghost. Why? The Holy Ghost is the one who will shed the light on everything in your life to show you whether it's false, whether it's fake, whether it's deception. Amen. You need the one who is the truth in order to be able to settle, settle certain cases in your life and settle certain teachings that you've heard throughout your life so we are in a search for the truth who is the truth the holy ghost when he comes he will bring enlightenment he will bring understanding he will bring illumination he will bring the truth as it is my god hallelujah and so we ask the holy ghost to breathe his breath upon your life and upon everything that he is a part of because if he's not a part of it you may accept something as truth and it's not the truth because only the truth which is a spirit of truth can lead you into the truth i don't know if y'all following me but i'm trying to show you something so just because Someone writes something or just because you hear something preached doesn't mean that it's the truth. That is their truth. How do we know if it's the truth? We have to access the truth from the Holy Ghost. I hope I made that plain for you. Now, when we profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we profess him out of our mouth, with our lips. There are things that have happened in your life before you were born again. And some of those things were called self-acquired curses. There were things that were acquired through some things that you did. But it didn't start with you. It started with your bloodline. And so because some things happened down the years with your bloodline all the way back to Adam, sometimes, uh, amen, thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, these curses have never been confronted. And so they begin to travel down 
down the generational line until someone in a generation stands up and say, okay, I am going to confront what has been confronting my generation for all of these years. Now, it doesn't matter about the group of people that are saying there's no curse, there's no devils. Uh, I don't care about that. I'm coming for those who are anointed to hear what I'm saying today and who have real problems and real curses and real demons attacking your life. You are not delusional. You are not crazy. You don't belong in a crazy house. You have serious demonic issues and God is coming to deal with them. Don't worry about people who call you crazy, delusional. You done lost your mind. You bipolar and schizophrenic. Don't worry about when they say those things is because they don't have knowledge they don't have understanding a person can have a specific anointing in a, a certain area of their lives they may function out of what god has given them it's a portion it's a diversity there are many varieties I, amen it, it's so many it's so vast the kingdom of heaven is so vast amen and so we don't all have it all but we have a portion and so just because you don't understand something does not mean that the next person is wrong. My God. I'm going to take it real slow because I want you to be taught today. So watch this. So because someone in your generational line have never stood up to say, I'm coming against the familiar spirit that's been traveling in my family for all of these years, right? So no one stood up in the name of Jesus to challenge what was coming down the bloodline, whether on your mother and your father's side. Glory to God. I'm, I'm getting ready to take off in just a moment because we're getting out of here. And so if we really want the curses broken off of our lives, if we really want the blood covenants broken, come on, there's some things we have to address in the realms of the spirit. And so the job of any strong man in a household is to make sure that every person in that family line uh, continues to repeat the cycles, continue to repeat the behavior patterns. Uh, the people in that generation say, for instance, it's poverty. They want everybody in your household to live in poverty. So the job of the strong man or the strongholds in your family is to make sure that no one gets married. Glory to God. Or the job of that stronghold may be everybody dies at age 40. To make sure that death shows up at age 40. So it could be uh, the job of that particular strong man in your house may be sickness. Everybody's sick. Everybody have a degenerative disease. Everybody got cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, cervical cancer. You know, all kinds of brain cancer, all kinds of cancers. They can't even find a name for your family has that in it. Amen. And so it may be people who have a spirit of perversion. Everybody in your household never got married. Everybody having babies. All the men have twin, 20 and 15 women. All of them are never married. They pop out babies everywhere no marriage everything is just hey why everybody lust feel everybody committing adultery everybody uh, looking at porn everybody masturbating everybody just under this spirit this this stronghold under this strong man of perversion now watch this i'm trying to show you something so the job of that particular strong man is to make sure that everybody in the family amen is is, is bearing the fruit of that particular entity and the fruit of that entity can be one or the other. Amen. A lot of them is idolatry. Amen. Many, many, many kinds of idolatry in families. You know, it it uh, uh it could be the stronghold of delay. While you all you you know you trying to get somewhere in your life and you feel like there's always something holding you back. Everybody in your family feel the same exact way. You, you get it ready. Amen. You get it ready to get a job and then they never call you. You didn't went through the whole process of filling out the application. You didn't did all of that. You didn't went on a second interview and they never call you back. And it's happening in your family and it is so prevalent and it is just constant and consistent. Okay. So it is, it is a job of a power, a guardian demon that is working against your home. 
But if no one in the family ever stood up to rise against that particular spirit, amen. It could be many kinds of spirits. I know, I know families like the entire, entire family, they're sick. The entire family, you know, they have spirits from the grave coming to them, talking to them. Everybody, everybody, everybody. It's just everybody is polluted. Everybody is under this yoke of bondage. And so how do we begin to go in and really deal with the foundation? Because if we remain on the surface, we are not dealing with the foundation. So it doesn't matter how you cut off the leaves, how you chop the branches. It doesn't matter. If you do not get to the root system, you are still going to have a problem in your life. What am I saying to you? You can even cut the tree trunk down. You can even cut the tree trunk down and still have the problem because the problem is not in the trunk. The problem is in the root, the root system. Now you can have a root system that is streaming, has many hundreds of thousands of roots going in many multiple different uh, directions. Okay, they can have big roots, strong roots, small roots. You know, go look at trees and go, go, go see what I'm saying. Amen. I'll do it. Come back and do a more in-depth teaching, but I'm trying to run through here, but I want to give you some facts and I want to help you to be able to break out of your family line curse. There are some families where all the men are whorish men. None of them ever get married. None of them. None of them ever get married. They are leading women on breaking hearts left and right. None of them. They're just a whore. They can't keep their pants on. If you pay them to, all the men are whores. Then you have families where the females, I tell you, listen, it's, it's, it's a mess. All right. Now you have families where they go to the waters and begin to sacrifice on behalf of every person that is born in that family. All kinds of things. They put covenants on your life. Curses. They speak over your life. They go to the witch doctor, the uh, Sangoma. They go to the they go to the witches and they go to all of the Satanists. Amen. Amen. To uh, speak incantations against your life. All kinds of things are against you. You don't even know unconscious, conscious curses that have been spoken and they are existing in the realm of the spirit. But because you don't know. You fending through life. You trying to get through life. You do. You don't know that these things are in your foundation. So what am I trying to tell you? What is in the foundation today? I'm praying for you. Watch this. I want to show you how it's going to happen. God is going to begin to give you dreams. God is going to begin to give you dreams, people of God. God is going to give you dreams right now. Those of you who are under the sound of my voice. God is going to begin to give you dreams to show you what's going on in your family line. Tommy, come over to Dr. Yvette Young Page for me, please. So, um, God is going to begin to show you some things. You're going to begin to have dreams. And the dreams are going to begin, hallelujah, to be very profound and you're going to see a lot of symbolization in your dreams. I'm prophesying to you right now. You're going to go to sleep and you're going to begin to have dreams and visions. And the dreams, I need you to get a pen and paper. I'm prophesying to you in the name of Jesus. You're going to have very, very detailed dreams. And you're going to see people. You're going to see places. You're going to see things. And I want you to write them down. You're going to see colors. You're going to see all kinds of things happening. You may be taken back into your childhood school. You may be taken back to your childhood uh, home where you grew up in you may be taken back to all kinds of places i'm prophesying to you right now tonight god is going to send you back into the foundation of your life now watch this in the body of Christ, you know, for so long because we don't have people showing us the uh, with the symbolization of our dreams. I used to dream so much and I had nobody when I was growing up to show me what my dreams were about. But God began to show me later on. My God, my God, some of you are having prophetic dreams and you don't even know it. Some of you can even remember dreams you had 10 and 15 years ago, but you didn't know what in the world it was. So you just left it alone. And you just, you just left it alone. But I promise you that God tonight is going to begin to speak to you by 
by the spirit of the living God. There is a transmission happening right now in the spirit realm. For those of you who are hearing the sound of my voice, I want you to know that God is going to come because he wants to solve the problems in your life. And I'm telling you, you have to understand the steps to solving the problems. What did I say? You need to understand the steps to solving your problems in the end times because people are running haywire trying to build their life. They are running all over the world. They're, they're hustling and they're trying to build their life. The Bible, the Bible's made it very, very clear of what will happen in the end times. But what I want to tell you right now is the reason that deliverance ministry is going to be one of the ministries that really rises up and skyrockets in the end time is because so many people are missing certain aspects in their Christian journey. They are not addressing, they're not addressing the foundation. So while you are trying to make it somewhere, the enemy is involved and he's hiding behind the scenes. And because you can't pinpoint him, amen, one of these days he's going to surface and then, you know, listen, it's going to be too late. Now you're going to have a lot of fighting on your hands. So the thing is, the greatest thing you can do is to begin to address this stuff now. Begin to address it now. You don't want it to pile up against your life. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you a few about the steps. Now, remember I told you that you can profess Jesus Christ with your lips, but it's from your heart. You profess with your lips. As you profess him, now you are taking a stand. You are acknowledging, you are admitting that now you are following Jesus Christ, no longer the way of the world, no longer the way of the devil. You have come out of agreement with the enemy. You have said, I'm going after Jesus Christ. Now, the same thing you're going to have to do with breaking the curse. You're going to have to denounce and you're going to have to renounce with your mouth. Watch this. To denounce something means to pronounce, especially, especially publicly, to be blameworthy or evil. So you're going to denounce and you're going to say that these workings of the devil, they are blameworthy and they are evil. I have nothing to do with them. I'm going somewhere. Watch this. You will denounce it. You will proclaim out of your mouth. You will announce it threateningly. You're going to denounce to the powers of darkness that they have no more grounds in your life. But before we can do that, you're going to have to know what you're denouncing. So I'm going to show you how to do this. You're going to go into your generational line. Hallelujah. And you're going to begin to write things down. Now, here is the instruction for you. You're going to begin to look at your family, find out what are the sicknesses, what are, what are the diseases, what are the problems in your family line. Look into them, write them down. Because in order for you to break it, you have to know what is going on. What happened when you were a child? What happened when you was in the womb? What happened when you were a baby? Of course, you don't know, but God knows. So God will begin to shine the light on what happened to you when you were one years old, two years old. What witch laid their hands on you and prophesied a lie over you? What person was in the nursery and cursed your life and cursed your destiny? What, what devil spoke against the pregnancy while you were pregnant or while your mother was pregnant? Pregnant. We have to go into the foundation to understand where the problems are coming from. Where did your problem begin and what generational line, where did it begin? Where did it start? What person put you up for collateral? A lot of times you don't know that your grandmother, or great grandmother, or great, great, great grandfather uh, put you up for collateral. Our, our ancestors were very, very, very into the occult. They were into the occult. They were into demonic practices. They were into, you know, serving other gods and worshiping shrines and idols. They were into it. They were into it. They loved it. They did it. They do it. They love it. And so, it, you know, you can't say, oh, I'm saved and none of that stuff don't have any effect on me. What I want you to understand is that it does have effect on you. And I'm going to show you how, because when we talk about deliverance, it's another form of spiritual warfare, which deals with witchcraft, Satanism, occultic powers, ancestral, tradi traditional and maritable, uh, maritable, not maritable, marital bondages. 
deliverance is not in conflict with the doctrine of salvation, but they rather complement each other. Some people don't believe in deliverance because they think, why deliverance? When Christ died for us, this is the most shallow way of thinking because Jesus cast out demons and people were set free. David says in Psalms 11, 3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So salvation deals with our identity of righteousness in Christ, which connects us to eternity. So as to when like if you die you know that you're going to heaven amen but when we begin to deal with deliverance we're dealing with the foundation of a person's life so if you do not deal with the foundation of your life a lot of you are marrying people that have a lot of strongholds in their foundation and you don't know what in the world to fight you have no idea all you know is there's a problem somewhere and you can't put your finger on it and so in other words you can shout and scream and dance at church you can give your tithes and your offerings and yet because you're not dealing with the foundation of a person's life you're not going to get through we have to address the foundation now should you give your tithes and your offerings yes you you should wherever you are being fed that's where you should give them. However, what I am saying to you is that we not only give the money, but we have to look into the foundation of our lives, of our family lives, to find out what in the world is fighting at the root of your life. It's just like when you go to the doctor and they want to find out what did your mother have? What did your father have? They give you, they say, come 15, 20 minutes early to fill out paperwork. Some dentist offices, they say, come 30 minutes early to fill out paperwork. And the reason they say come 30 minutes is because they know that it's going to take you some time to fill out that paperwork. They're trying to find out information on you. They want to test your blood. They'll take blood from you. They're reading reading your blood because your blood is speaking which means there is something in your bloodline that is able to see what in the world is going on inside of the body amen amen and so remember when Cain killed Abel glory to God God was like where's your brother Cain and you know he was he wanted to lie and say something crazy but because the blood of Abel was speaking my God that lets you know right now that what's in your bloodline is still speaking against your life come on somebody now yes the blood of Jesus is speaking things that are better than the blood of Abel, but how do we appropriate? How do we apply it? The blood of Jesus. How do we take the blood of Jesus and apply it to what is going on in our bloodline? There is a way to do it. Amen. You got to know it. You can't just be hollering and screaming at church without knowing. We did that for so long, people of God, and I'm telling you, I am sending out a clarion call to let you know that it's beyond the noise. It's beyond the noise. Somebody type that. It's beyond the noise. I'm coming out with a message. It's beyond the noise. It's beyond the drums. It's beyond the, the shouting. It's beyond the organ. And you start doing that funky chicken dance. And that's a wrap. Everybody, you know, just get in a frenzy. And, and the circus now. It's circus about to break out now. Everybody flipping and jumping through hoops. Like, you know, the elephants jumping through the hoops in the church service. And we got to get beyond that, folks. We got to get beyond that. Come on. I want somebody to get angry. I want somebody to get angry. I want somebody to tell me something. Tell me something because listen, listen, nobody can tell me that the shouting and the jumping and the noise and shouting through hoops have gotten us where we need to be in God. Nobody can prove that to me. Prove it to me that the noise has gotten us somewhere in the body of Christ. Prove it to me. Prove it to me and then you will shut me up. But I promise you, you can't shut me up because the Lord has given me the word today to tell you that it's beyond the noise. We have to begin to address things and we have to begin to mature in the body of Christ and look for people who have the anointing, amen, to deal with your issue because everybody have different issues in their lives and they need different voices that are anointed for what they are going through. Hallelujah. Get, get angry, woman of God. I'm angry. 25 years of nothing. 25 years of hooping and people prying on your emotions. They start playing the slow music and you start crying and you emotional. But that don't mean the Holy Ghost is doing nothing. The Holy Ghost wants to really do something in our lives, people of God. The Holy Ghost is beckoning for the church to grow up and become mature and stop playing around with the instruments and stop playing around. Amen. We're not teaching the people of God and 
and folks are just getting all hyped up on the music and the music is a tool that Satan is using in the church because Satan knows the power of music. Satan knows the power of music. So while you are shouting in the church, Satan is sitting back laughing because he knows that the music has captivated you and the music has almost put you under a spell. Oh, yeah. The, the devil understands because the devil, when he moved and when he walked, he excluded the music, the worship of God Almighty. He knows the power of music. That's why he can put you under a spell. That's why when people listen to certain music, they go, they go kill somebody because of what they have just heard. That's why in the church today, when they start beating the drums, uh, it's it's almost like tribalism in the church and they become I'm telling you they become under a spell it's like they just start moving and dancing and Satan knows that you're gonna ready to show up and you're getting ready to act up and nothing is being done while all of that music is going on and you leave out of that church the same way you walked in now is something wrong with music no I'm not saying that I will tell you what I'm saying I will say what I mean and mean what I say what am I saying? I'm saying that there is a time for it. There is a time for us to be under anointed music. There is a time, but if the music don't connect us to the Holy Ghost, then the music will keep us emotional and hyped up and go home with the devils that you've been fighting for 30, 40 years. Come on, somebody. Come on. I know this is the itch ear generation. I know there's only going to be a few that really, really listen to this message. But it's all right. It's all right. I'm good. I'm good to go. But what I want you to know today is that we're going to look into the foundation so that you can start breaking this stuff off of your life. It's not the hollering. I did all of it. I almost fainted while I was hollering. I hit the pew in my head. I could have bust my head, went to the house. You know, I, listen, listen, we can act a plum nut in church. And I'm beyond that. If the Holy Ghost ain't on me, I'm not moving. <laughs> now, what I want to say to you is that those of you who are serious with God, he will bring people who are anointed to break open the mysteries of his word to you. To open the seals so that you can understand what's going on. Even with the word of God, you need the Holy Spirit to breathe upon the word that you are reading. If you don't have the Holy Ghost to breathe upon the word, the word that you are reading will kill you. And so hence we have doctrines of man, doctrines of devils. We have unsaved folk taking the word, using the, using the word, and they're killing all kinds of people everywhere. Because you need the Holy Ghost to breathe upon his word, my God, who he inspired men to write. You need the Holy Ghost to breathe so that now it can bring forth fruit in your life. And put a seed into your spirit and cause transformation to come forth. Now, when you go to the doctor, they begin to ask you all kinds of things. And, and the church, you know, you know, hey, I'm going to talk about the church because what am I doing here? I am telling you how you have to begin to open your eyes. I am showing the house to the house. If we were so elevated and mature... The world systems would not be doing what they're doing. We would not, amen, have to sit down while the governmental system are signing in laws and we, we can't do nothing about it. We can't do nothing about it as a church because we so slap your neighbor high five and, you know, your breakthrough is coming. The devil is a liar. Every one of us, every one of us, every one of us have to pray and fast. Every one of us as the believers of Jesus Christ. Every one of us have to pray and fast. Everyone, whoever is not fasting, you are defeated. I promise you. Because you cannot defeat some powers in the spirit realm without killing the flesh. A lot of your problems are spiritual and you won't be able to kill that demon without going in the spirit. 
but you have to be prepared for it. Amen. And the Lord wants to prepare you because he is looking for mature people to go and deal with some business in the realms of the spirit. You can deal in the spirit. Don't let nobody scare you. Don't let nobody tell you you can't go in the spirit and deal with nothing. Don't let anybody tell you. Don't let them tell you that, you know, fighting in the realms of the spirit is only for certain people. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. He does not want you to fight him. Because if you know your identity in God, and if you are preparing yourself, you can fight and win a good warfare. You can fight a warfare. You can fight your battles. And you will fight a good one. And you will win only if you have the necessary tools and the weapons, mm -hmm. the knowledge, right. the understanding, mm -hmm. the operations, the logistics. The rules and the laws of the spiritual world. If you know it, then you go up and you do what you're supposed to do. Amen. So that your life can be transformed in the, in the, in the earth realm. Now, you want something to manifest in your life from the supernatural realm. So how in the world you think you're going to get it? We cannot get it just by sowing money, people of God. Now, you sow your money because you need to be blessed. But there is other things. There is other compartments. You're always going to hear me say this. It's not just about the money. We must be able to go in and address it legally. Uh -huh. We must address it legally, which means we have to look into the proper way of praying and addressing what we need in the courts of heaven. Half of the church don't even know there's a court system, don't even know that you can go there, don't even know that you can address these things. I didn't know. I didn't know. Glory to God. I'm sh grateful that he's shining the light and bringing the illumination for his people to know how we're going to get things addressed so that we're not just shouting real loud and getting hoarse and sending people home with a lot of spit on their heads. And a lot of oil on their heads and knocking them on the floor. And they get back up and they say they feel good. But they still have not pierced the realm of the spirit. I said piercing the realm of the spirit. Yeah, I talk about the courts of heaven because there are real courts. There are real courts of heaven. Why else would God, why else would God be a judge? Why else would the Holy Ghost be an advocate? Who is he advocating for? And why else would Jesus be our an attorney? Why else? Because there is a court system. There is a court system. And if there is something legal over your life, you need to have it addressed. I'm talking to you, people of God. If you did something and you asked for forgiveness, you're forgiven. But legally, it has to be addressed. God will forgive your sins. But listen, what you did, you have to get it addressed. Because the accuser of the brethren is accusing you day in and day out. This is what the preachers are not telling you. All they're telling you is, listen, you got to sow everything in your bank account. You know what they're doing? They're using the Elijah and the, and the woman with the last morsel. They're using that story to pimp you and exploit you. And you never get your breakthrough. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Come on, talk back to me. All, they will use that scripture. They use the Jubilee. They use Psalms 89.1. They use Psalms 89.19. They use Elijah and the last morsel. So that you can go in your pocketbook and empty your bank account. And after you empty your bank account, three years, four years, five years, six years, ten years, twelve years, twenty years, you still don't have your breakthrough. Talk to me. Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. Let's talk. I, I can I can calm down and listen. I want to hear. I want to hear. Because I know what they did to me. And I know they're still doing the same story. They're using the same Elijah story. The but Listen, I bet Elijah is flipping upside down in heaven saying, why are these people exploiting God's people behind the scripture? And David is probably pacing the floor in heaven, telling them folk, why, my God, are they using the Psalms to exploit God's people? Yep. Well, that's what we're dealing with. We're going to deal with it squarely, people. We're going to deal with this stuff squarely. We're going to deal with it squarely because it's what's happening. Now, we're going to get back to you breaking these curses. I want you to begin. Here's the instruction. I want you to begin to write these things down. 
tonight the Lord is going to give you dreams. Mm -hmm. All throughout your week, the Lord is going to give you dreams. I want you to pray before you go to sleep. I want you to anoint your room where you sleep. Amen. Go through your house. I want you to begin to do this. I'm giving you instruction. So true, sister. Yes, there's laws. I want to give you instruction. I want you to do something because if you want to break the curse for real, we're going to do the steps. Come on, everybody out of order, anarchists, you know, violating the rules and laws of the kingdom and think we're going to get a breakthrough. It, it, don't, it don't work that way. Come on, what? You know, we are the most out of control bunch of people in the kingdom of God. You can't go in the king of queen kingdom and act like that. You can't go to, uh, where, where's that uh, kingdom where they have a kingdom? You can't go to England acting crazy, walking in there looking any kind of way. You know, you, you can't go in there. You can't even sit at the table and eat the food if you don't know how to put, you know, lay your napkin and, you know, your fork, what fork to eat with, what spoon to eat with. And in the kingdom of God, everybody just so out of order. What in the world is that? That was such a shame and a disgrace to the name we say we, we you know, we serve. Mm -hmm. It's such a shame, right? Come on. Churches out of order got to get in order. Come on. I'm calling you to order. I'm calling you to order. I'm calling you to order. It's my anointing. It's all right. I ain't scared of none of y'all. Listen, I'm calling you to order. I'm calling you to order. I'm calling you to order. Come on. Come on. No earthly kingdom should have order more than the kingdom of God should have order. Nobody in the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God should be breaking rank. And when Satan broke rank, he got kicked out. Yep. When Satan eyed the throne, he got kicked out. So in the church today, what we have, people breaking rank because they say, oh, you know, I'm gifted, I'm this, I'm that. Nobody want to submit to nobody because everybody want to be a leader. Well, first of all, if you don't follow, you can't lead nobody anywhere. Number two, number two, come on. We got to get this thing together, people of God. We got to get it together. Once we get it together, we're going to rise up in the end time. And the world will see that we are who we say we are. Amen. We are who we say we are. And we mean business. Because when Jesus was 12 years old, walking the face of the earth, and Mary and Joseph going crazy, you know, looking for their son. And, you know, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Jesus said, woman, hold on. Calm down. Calm down. Woman, don't you know I'm about my father's business? Woman, don't you know I came to do the business of the one that sent me? <laughs> oh, we on kingdom business, people of God, but we've been playing a whole lot. And so that's why we have been thwarted. That's, that's, that's why we have been deceived. And that's why we have been hoodwinked. And that's why we're not far where we need to be. Advance. Advancing. Every human being who is a part of the kingdom of God must be empowered. I said everyone. Not just those on the stage. I said everyone. When you are empowered and you are fitted in the kingdom establishment of God Almighty, my God, this kingdom will be so beautiful. It will be amazing. But Satan understands a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. It will crumble. And here we have people crumbling everywhere. 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 See, what we want to do is like throw shade and cover up what's not working. And we want to, you know, put up, you know, before everybody what is working. But really, God ain't worrying about what is working. He's worrying about what is not working. He is trying to address what's not working so that it can what? Now work. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I want you to begin. I'm giving you instructions today. And then I'm going to get off of here because we're going to come back. Um, I want you to anoint your room. I want you to be adamant about doing this. I want you to pray over your room. I want you to pray over your house. I want you to be active, an active alert Christian. You are on active duty, sweethearts. You are not just a pew warmer, okay? You are in the realms of the spirit. Most of you are around witches and warlocks who are practicing uh, their witchery, uh, lighting their candles on you, looking in glass crystal balls, looking in mirrors, and calling up your star. Most of you don't even know how to deal with this stuff, but it's, nevertheless, it's going on. It goes on right where I am, in this city where I am, everywhere. It, listen, most of you are dealing with some shape or form, some sort of uh, demonic resistance in your life. Okay, now, those of you who are not, that I, you know, well, praise the Lord, glory to God, this is not the one for you. But those of you who know that you are dealing with spiritual resistance in the realms of the spirit, you have things to do. So at night, I want you to begin to pray and I want you to write down every single thing that you know 
every single thing that you can remember because the Holy Spirit right now, he's going to begin to give you, he's going to open up your understanding. He's going to begin to give you names. He's going to begin to, listen, everybody you slept with, I want you to remember them. I want you to write them down. Because some of you have slept with warlocks and didn't even know it. Now they cursed your life and they cursed your family. And now you got demons running all through your household and all these things going on. Listen, I deal with this stuff every single day. People calling me about these issues, they are real. You are not crazy. You're not delusional. Don't let somebody tell you because they don't understand deliverance. Don't let them tell you that you are crazy and you're losing it. You have some spiritual problems that just need to be addressed. Okay, it needs to be addressed. So you need to know how to close the doors, how to close the doors. If the doors are open, Satan will never be able to get out because they're open. Okay, so we need to padlock the doors. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that spiritually. You are on active duty. You must guard the gates of your life. Know what's coming in your computer. Know what's coming through your television. Know what's coming through your radio. Come on. You have to know what is going on in your household. Don't let your children be in the back watching all kinds of things on magic and, you know, sorcery and Harry Potter, looking at all these different things. Listen, people of God, you got to guard your gates. If not, the enemy coming in your house, period, is just, that's just the way that it goes. We are in a world, the Bible described it to us, that in the end times, uh, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness will cover the people. If you look at the news, you will see the gross darkness everywhere. So what am I simply telling you is that you need the protection of the blood of Jesus to be applied to your life. You also need to close the gates of your life. You also need to write down, you're going to get a notebook. Go get a fresh notebook. 99 cents. You are not that poor that you don't have 99 cents. And if you don't have it, I'll send you one. You're going to get a notebook and you want to begin to write down every name of pre people you slept with, every name of people you know, Anything that has been done to you, laid hands on you, evil hands laid on you, you're going to write down every name. You're going to begin to go in and break these curses link by link. You're going to begin to come out of agreement with it. You're going to denounce everything that you've done before the Lord. You're going to renounce it openly and you're going to cut off the legal access to your life. Now, if you don't do these things, I'm telling you, 20 people lay hands on you and that problem won't go. Well, 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 I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. A hundred ministers will lay hands on you and the problem won't go. It's because legally the spiritual realm works according to legalities. We weren't told this. We were only told to believe God and have faith. So while we holding on to God, we being busted up by, you know, I mean, demons that look like sumo wrestlers coming at you, you know, with swords and all kind of, you don't know what in the world to do. When you go to sleep, you see all these dragons fighting. You don't know what in the world. You, you know, horses coming at you and snakes and dra all kinds of stuff. And what in the world? All they told you is that, oh, Jesus, hallelujah, God, the blood, yeah. the blood. Yeah. The blood, what? The blood, what? <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> so how do we go in and break it so those are some things after you write those things down then you're going to repent now here's another another I don't, I, I don't know however real repentance is led by the Holy Spirit real repentance is not just asking God to forgive you I did that for many years and was in bondage Real repentance is when you are broken before the Lord and you no longer go back into the thing that you were once doing. Real repentance, people of God, is not just saying, oh, God, forgive me. I won't do that again. And then the next three hours, you masturbating again. Real repentance is not just asking God to forgive you. Real repentance means to turn. Boom. I turn my mind I no longer go in that direction. I have been now taking on the mind of Christ. I've renewed my mind. Get out of my mind. Loose my mind, Satan. I'm gone. I have totally, totally broken free from your captivity. You have, you have said to the enemy, I no longer want anything to do with you. I no longer want anything to do with you. Some of you are in relationships. You are playing with them relationships. Come on. That sex is not that good. Get out of that relationship. Come on. It ain't all of that. It, it What? Come on. This your destiny that you are playing around with. What is your destiny? The purpose that God allowed you to come 
through the, your mother's body. The purpose that God allowed you to live and not be in your grave today. You are alive because you have a purpose upon your life. There is a frame in heaven for your life that God wants you to reach. And many people have been hoodwinked by Jezebel spirits, uh, Delilah spirits, all kinds of demons from the generational line that have stopped them in their tracks from ever being able to re re you know, really get to the full potential of what God has for their life. So what else? You're going to begin to cut ties with people that God told you to break off from. Now, if you're in a relationship because they're helping you pay your bills, you're going to have to consider some things. Do you want the soul tie or do you want to be free? You have to yourself with your own will. Because I hear people all the time, well, he's helping me pay my bills. But you want the soul tie broken. Or you want the curse broken. Or you want your life to improve. You now have to be the one to say I'm going to take the Lord at his word. If I get out of this ungodly, illicit relationship, I know that the Lord will provide for me. I know that he will open up a way for me because you want to walk in obedience to the Lord God. Why did Adam and Eve fall? It wasn't because of the apple. It was because they simply disobeyed God. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, people of God. It don't matter how much money you give. See, I want you to know this. Don't give your money and you know there's open, blatant rebellion in your life. Deal with it and then bring your gift to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Come on. Let's deal with it right so you can get free. My God, I get, I get testimonies every day. I know what I'm teaching is working. If you work this thing, it will work for you. Now, you're going to begin to cut it off. Every person you slept with, they put deposits in your life. Every person. Your ex-husband dropped something in you and you want to be married. You got to get that deposit out of you. Y'all, listen, we're going to talk for real. This is Upfront Talk with Dr. Yvette Young. You're going to get those ties out of your life. The enemy is trying to keep me from getting free. Can read comments, but no video or sound. The devil's a liar. I'm going to upload it for you so you can hear it later. Don't worry. We're going to deal with that. So we're going to get the evil deposits out of our lives. Everything from the past, every relationship, every lesbian relationship, every homosexual experience, anyone that raped you from your past, molested you from your past, if they dropped their virtues inside of your body, listen, there was a tie that was connected there. We want that tie broken. Glory to God. We want it broken. We want it broken and we're going to disconnect it in the realm of the spirit. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get for real. We're not just going to be, you know, ha, 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 hallelujah, glory to God and laying on the floor and acting like, you know, you know, a circus. No, we're going to get real. We're going to get real and then we're going to get free. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it the proper way. We're going to today in 2018, we're going to become professional Christians. We're going to become, what does that mean? That means people that are walking in excellence, people that are walking upright before the Lord, people who are serious about God and going through the necessary steps. Amen. To walk in wholeness and freedom and the fullness of what God has called them to do. You must break every soul tie. Some of you are schizophrenic. And the reason you are schizophrenic is because you have trauma in your life. Some of you were abused and battered and spoken negative words. And those negative words connected you. You connected to those words. And that word curse over your life is still prevalent. So that thing has to be broken. Even some of you were spoken negative things by a leader or a parent a parental figure that was that cursed your life or spoke negative words over you you need to break free from those words and so if a leader is jealous of you and they, you know it happened to me uh it happened to me i went through this uh leaders were jealous and they pronounced all kind of evil against me it was charismatic witchcraft listen this stuff will work against your life if you don't know how to deal with it how to battle it and what i'm trying to show you is you're going to have to battle it 
in the realms of the spirit. But you're going to have to break the soul tie with the people who pronounce the negativity over your life. Any person that laid hands on you, they transferred evil deposits in your life and you didn't know it. Or if you slept with a spiritual father a spiritual mother that's an illegal relationship that is spiritual incest that is illegal and very much so demonic that is not holy that is not godly talk back to me so what am i saying to you today we're going to break the curse for real we're not shouting we're not screaming i'm talking to you you are listening you are taking notes you are going to get free you are going to move into your freedom. You are going to be professional, excellent people of God who knows who they are, who knows their identity, who is going to go very high in God. You're going to soar the realms of the spirit. You're going to walk in your call, your revelation. You're going to be a, you're going to ascend into your holy places with the Lord God. Your, your relationship with Jesus will be very vibrant. Hallelujah. God will use you every single day of your life and your life will never remain the same. So what I want you to do is begin to write down these names and I want you to begin to repent and then I want you to begin to break the ties with every individual. I want you to go back into your now I'm giving you some keys. Now I'm going to delete this because I'm giving out pearls. I'm giving out pearls. I'm going to delete this. This ain't for everybody. Whoever jump on and get off praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't want wolves on here cuz this is for people who really want to be free. I don't, I don't want those trampling nothing I'm giving you because I know this stuff works because it worked because it works for me. Now, I want you to begin to remember everyone who you slept with, anyone who raped you, anyone who pronounced negative words over your life, parental, whether it's your father, your biological father, your biological mother. Your boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, your teacher from elementary school, your ex-pastors, whoever have laid hands on you, pronounced negative over your life, or just spoke over your life. If you have ever had trauma in your life, I want you to write that trauma down. We're going to break the power, the link of that trauma. When trauma comes in your life, now the demons are on the scene. And what they do is they jump in your life. They use that trauma as an occasion to take advantage of you. I want you to write that trauma down. Whether you are abused physically, whether you were raped uh, harshly, uh, whatever the case may have been, what, whatever. Maybe, maybe you've had a car accident and you have never been the the same i want you to begin to write it down you're going to get deep healing you're going to get deliverance for real and i know that god is going to help your life become free because people who are not free they're bringing their problems in other people's lives they want to get married and i'm telling you the marriages are not working because they are polluted they're defiled and linked up to their past and we cannot do that any longer not this year this is the curse of illegal anointing, which puts your life in danger or mark for debt. Yes, illegal anointing. You cannot get an, an anointing by sleeping with your spiritual father, spiritual mother. You cannot create a soul time with spiritual mother, spiritual father. It's demonic. It's illegal. Amen. It's something that's supposed to be holy and righteous before the Lord so that you can get a spiritual inheritance. Amen. And there's a lot of people sleeping with spiritual parents. Amen. They think that they're going to get an anointing or they think that... I don't know what they think, but they are deceived. That's what I know. Okay? That's what I know. They are deceived. So, I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to be hoodwinked. I want you to get your freedom. Okay? So, I want you to write those things out. Now, this is an instruction. If you begin to do this, I want you to begin to confess this out before the Lord. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Because you want to get free. Okay? Now, when you write all those names, some of them you will remember, some you won't. When you don't remember, you ask Holy Spirit, shine the light. My God, Holy Ghost knows everything. You cannot manufacture anointing that's unconstitutional in the kingdom of God. That's right, John King Hill, my husband. Um, You're going to read uh, to, you know, he just. Yeah, something that will give them a platform. Well, uh, prostitution in the church today, huh? Temple prostitution, that's what it's called. Temple prostitution. Yep. 
The prostitutes are in the house. They're not on the street. They in the house. They, they in the building. So after you begin to write down every individual you've had sex with, every individual that have raped you, after you begin to write the names of every parental curse, every spiritual parental curse, biological parental uh, curse, anything that was done to you, spoken of you, if you left someone's ministry and they said you would never be anything, you would never go anywhere, you know, if they spoke negative over you, that Jezebel demon will die, die by fire die by fire if you leave a person's ministry do it the right way if you can by all means you do it the right way but it does not matter what they pronounce over your life that curse will be revoked and reversed in the name of jesus christ you do not have to remain in a ministry that is abusing you that is taking advantage of you that is speaking false doctrines over uh, your life and telling you you have to sleep with them in order to get an anointing no, God's prophets don't operate like that. That's Jezebel's boys. That's Satan's boys. That's who operate like that. Okay? That that that's not holiness. My God. My God. My God. And so I want you to begin to do that. Okay? Now, we're going to break the curse. So word curses, you're going to speak a word against it. And then not only that, Okay, we're going to break the links and we're going to call the soul ties out. You want your soul back. Every person that you have connected to, you want your soul back. You have to get it back. How else are you going to walk in wholeness? I mean, for so long, think about the preaching that we've heard. And really, you know, I mean, listen, people, we want our souls back. If your soul has been broken, has been fragmented, you have to get that part back so that it can now connect with the piece that's still inside. Amen. And then now, boop, 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 you begin to connect all the dots, all the pieces. You get your soul back inside of your body. My God, this is good. And I know somebody going to be free. My God, it's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. If you begin to do these things, the curse will break off of your life. But you have to go step by step. Now, there is a deeper element now. There are some things that, you know, if, say for instance, you know that there is witchcraft voodoo you know all kinds of demonic covenants if you know that these things are there uh from your foundation you know that you know god has revealed maybe your parent amen has gone to a witch doctor and put a curse over you maybe your parent amen has dedicated you to satan you don't know if, if you know these things then yes write them down we're going to address these things we're going to address them. Now, if you have, uh, uh, you know, a way of being connected to an authority figure that is a higher rank than you in the spirit world, they can break the curse. So that's why I'm trying to show you the steps so that you can know sometimes God would just help you by bringing a certain mantle in your life because you can do it on your own. Now, I'm giving you the steps, and after you take care of these steps, we want to address everything. Father was a 33rd Mason. Yes, yes, yes. Masonry, you know, Eastern Stars, all of these things. I'm telling you, I have so much to give you. These people, they dedicate their children, you know. I mean, they light candles. They put all kinds of uh, incantations. And not only that, they put your life up for collateral, which means they tell the devil, you know, possess my, my third granddaughter. Okay, take her life. Don't let her get married. Don't let her ever be able to go to school. Don't let her ever be able to have a baby. It put a curse on the church while the church slap your neighbor. The devil is like, don't slap me. Don't slap me. Keep your hand to yourself. Let's be orderly in the house of God. Let's be taught. 
Let's be taught. Oh, I'm 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 gonna be sarcastic. Y'all know I'm you know me, you know me, you know me, you know me. Now, those of you who are dealing with rejection, rejection from the womb, maybe your mother didn't want you, and because it was a thought, it, it transferred to you as a child. Or you yourself rejected your child. You have to break that curse off of your child. You're the only one that can do it because of the fact that you were the one who initiated the rejection. So a lot of times, you know, people are in relationships that they are, they're being hurt constantly because they don't know that it's the spirit of rejection on their life. And rejection can come from the womb. A rejection, a lot of times people feel like they just don't want to have nothing to do with me everywhere I go. It's because rejection is there. And it has many different tentacles and many different links. And I want you to be able to get to the place of breaking this stuff off of your life. So those of you, we're going to go over breaking this stuff off of your life and then like i told you in the beginning we're going to denounce and we're going to renounce we're going to open our mouth and we're going to come against the stuff we are saying to god we don't want any ties any connections to any of it we want forgiveness from our god he said if if we confess our sins before the lord he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness amen and the cleansing and the uh from all unrighteousness is not automatic it is something that he will begin to do he will begin to cleanse he will begin to purge amen so it's a walking day in day out process that's what i learned you know because i was saying you know i was doing the scriptures so my i've been to two bible colleges i was doing all these things and i'm telling you i learned as the holy spirit began to walk me through this is that it's not an automatic process somebody write that down it's not automatic I know I'm helping somebody. Now, false religions, all kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, legalism, doctrinal error, unbelief, doubt, rejection of God, anger at God, unbelief in God's word. Amen. If you suffer with any of these, we have to repent of, of these things. Hypocrisy, religious bondage, religious slavery, religious murder, lust, ambition for recognition, lust of ambition for position. Amen. False love, false gifts, false tongues, false discernment. All of these things, we're going to cover this stuff. Listen, the body of Christ is going to another level. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there is a there is a remnant of God that's going to get purged up and she's going to become the bride of Jesus Christ without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I promise you, you're going to begin to renounce all religions that do not accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Anybody in your family line, if you used to uh, have, you know, American Indian religious ascendant masters, assembly of Yahweh, Edgar, Kansai, uh, Baha Faith, Black Magic, Buddhism, Christian Science, Church of Armageddon, Church of Bible Understanding, the Church of of the living word church universal and triumphant of course uh in miracles at Kent car est come on listen uh the farm guided meditation mormonism new age uh, himalayan uh, uh, uh kabbalah self-realization fellowship all of these voodoo associations macumba santeria witchcraft wicca worldwide church of god science of the mind islam muslim international community of krishna hinduism uh all kinds of minor cult yoga and false secret uh christian sects silver mind control gene dixon you want to break the ties with these religions why am i telling you this is because if you join yourself to these uh different religions that are against Christianity. There is something that happened when you signed up to be a part of these groupings. So you want to break off the links and attachments that attach you to the spirits that are behind the religion. The spirits that are behind or that instigates the religion, the fallen demons that instigate against the religion you want to break a hold of it i'm telling you all some good stuff and i'm telling you listen i promise you somebody gonna get free i love this stuff because we are working toward becoming what the bride of jesus christ without spot without wrinkle without blemish we don't want to be a people who is highly gifted you know but highly defiled highly polluted not uh submitted to the lord god almighty we want holiness or hell. Listen, we want holiness, 
We want righteousness, but there is no way we can do both. And so I'm trying to show you how to disconnect your life from everything that is ungodly so that the what? The Holy Ghost can come in you and possess your temple. And when he possess your temple on every floor and in every room, they liken our temple. We are triune, God the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. We are body, spirit, and soul. The soul is the mind, the will, the emotion. We are three part, three part. We have three compartments. Amen. We have different floors in this body. Amen. And the enemy can operate throughout rooms, different rooms in your life. That's why you can have bondage in one area and you're free in another. So the area where you're free is where the Holy Ghost is occupying. But wherever there's bondage, the Holy Ghost does not occupy that place. My God, I'm, I, I'm saying something up in here. Wherever there is a bondage, the Holy Ghost have not yet taken rulership over that area. I'm speaking something right here. My God, Satan has rulership over the unsaved world until they are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. That's correct. So, we're going to repent of the rebellion. We did talk about that, of the rebellion of the sins of our forefathers. If your forefathers or foremothers did not repent, it will behoove you to do it. And the reason you want to do it, led by the Holy Spirit with his beautiful self, he will lead you to begin to repent for what they did. You weren't responsible for it. But as you repent, God will bring, I'm telling you, I, I feel the power of God. When you begin to repent for what your ancestors did, the power of the Holy Ghost will come rushing in your life to break the legal hold off of you and your generation and those people that came out of your womb. Your children will receive the blessing because of your repentance for your ancestors. My God, I know I'm saying something in this place tonight. Can this be broken even though you was adopted? Yes, ma'am, it can be broken. Yes, ma'am, 100%. We're going to go through that bloodline. We're going to get it broken. Yes, ma'am. All you're doing is taking a renunciation and a denunciation, and you're pr pronouncing to the realms of the spirit that I am coming out of agreement with everything that is on my mother, my father's side, every link, every attachment. Amen. You're renouncing it. You're coming out of agreement. You're going to get free by the power of God and so the Holy Ghost will come rushing in his temple and he will be able to live in his temple and overflow the temple and not only the infilling the overflowing of the power of the Lord will come in your life and everywhere you go everything you do the power of his spirit will begin to manifest in your life my God we are going to break the power of divination, any spirit of divination. Some of you were into witchcraft before you were saved. You have gone to witch doctors yourself. You have went to psychics to read your palm. All of these things. Listen, we have to break the legal hold. Just because you invite Jesus in your heart does not. But in my quote, TV show, it does not mean that it has been broken and destroyed over your life. We want the legal ground. We want the legal grounds. Holy Spirit revealed the name of a witch doctor. My God, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom had prayed over me, did not know. My God, my God, my God. That's right, that's right. Witches will come in a hospital when you have your baby and they want to touch your baby. When you have your baby, they want to dedicate your child to Satan. My God, we are going to get knowledge that is going to break us free as the people of God. No more will we be victimized by the enemy. No more, amen, will we be antagonized by the enemy. We are going in our high places and we will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Our children will be blessed. They will rise up and be the star that God has called them to be. Their star will shine bright in their generation. Oh, Kande, Sheramando, Sheramande, Komande, Osebe, Namaya, Oh, Namaya, Namaya, Mama, Mande, Nana. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. We're going to break the curses, amen, all the way back to where your problem started. And we're going to break them all the way back 
to Adam. Glory to God. Anything that came from Adam, we're going to break it and we're going to ask the Holy Ghost to apply the blood uh, over your life, uh, over your generation, uh, over your body. Uh, that sickness will leave you. Uh, that curse will break off of your head uh, so that you can be what God has called you to be. Your children are blessed. Uh, be sanctified your bloodline. Uh, we clear out the pipeline. Uh, we disconnect from every, every dark spirit, uh, every fallen demon, uh, every satanic power. Yes, the demons who, who want your star, the demons uh, who don't want you to shine, the demons who, who cut over who shake it, who turn up a ha. Rasonda lebe kote lebe kote lebe ha ya. Rasonda lobo kote lebe kote lebe ha. Rasonda lobo kosa ba ha da ba. We break the curse in the name of Jesus Christ. We break the curse by the power of the blood of the Lamb. We break the ancestral powers that have spoken negatively over your life. Every parental curse be broken in the name of the Lord. Ekora mashanda lobo kote lebe kote lebe ya soto ba ha. In the name of the Lord, we reverse it by the power of His Spirit today. Kando bo konde lebe o soto ra ba ha ya. Rebe koto no bo hoshe ke lebe ya sata ra ba ha. The power of rejection be broken off of your life today. Kando bo ho. The power of depression be broken off of your life today. I call you free from the spirit of fear today. In the name of the Lord, every spirit of death and destruction be broken off of your life today. You will live to declare the glory of the Lord. Come on, lift your hands and give God praise. Right where you are, begin to give God the glory for your life. Begin to give God the glory that he is coming in your generation. He's coming into your dreams to break off every spell, every hex. Every witch that wants your husband. Every witch that wants your children. Every witch that wants your job. Every witch that wants your house. Every witch that wants your promotion. Every witch that wants your body. Body. Envious witchcraft be broken, be destroyed. In the name of the Lord, we commanded the backfire. Echo Bashata, backfire. Every demonic arrow, backfire. Echo Tabahanda. We send it back to the sender. We send it back to the head. We send it back to the heart and kill every witch. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, suffer not a witch to live. We break the power of witchcraft and I release the blessing. Oh my God, today, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Ho shere de 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 aso tera ba kandi ra shaka. Robo bo 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 so tere de de aso tere de aso ta. Makando bo ho se kere de aso ta. We break the curse. We break the curse. We break the curse by the blood of the Lamb. We break the curse by the koba handi aso tere de bo ho sa ya. Ikando bo ho sha ya. Oh God, oh God. Oh God, yeah. Oh God, yeah. Oh God, yeah. Oh God. We bless you for Jesus, Lord. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh God, oh God, yeah. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, yeah. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. That curse on your husband's life. Come on. Some of you are married to people with curses on their life. And you don't know what to do. We're going to fight against the foundational issues in that life. Hallelujah. Some of you don't have a house that's full of fruitfulness because you're battling against the foundational problems in that home. My God. That goes back many years before you even met them. But I'm going to come back and we're going to show you how to deal with it tonight. Ah, my God, 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 yeah. My God, yeah. He's my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on a Monday, oh, Sunday. Oh, God, yeah. Tonight we're going to come on and we're going to show you how to deal with curses your husband was put in prison for 20 years my god i'm so sorry i know that's very 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 um 
heartbreaking but listen god can open up the prison doors yeah god can open up the prison doors yeah oh yes he can yeah oh yeah you can let him go free right where he is god will open up the prison doors tonight hallelujah come on god he will open up the prison doors tonight yeah no matter what bondage you are in no matter who spoke over your life no matter the problem in your life no matter the challenge in your life i say be set free today I shall be healed today. I shall be broken free today. Oh, God, be free. Come on. Walk in your freedom. Walk in your prosperity. Walk in your healing. And let God take you into your destiny. Come on, believe the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, we break the power of sickness and disease today. Every power of sickness over your organs today. I break the powers. Fear of infirmity, cancer, cancer of the breast, cancer of the stomach, leukemia, cancer of the blood, cancer of the prostrate. In the name of the Lord, we break the power of cancer. We break the power of arthritis. We break the power of every blood disease. In the name of the Lord, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Oh, be healed, be healed, be healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is upon me right now. And, and he's is showing me that he is ministering to the people who are listening and who are going to listen. Even if you are listening on YouTube, even if you are listening, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 come we break it right now in the name of Jesus. We break it right now. Be free in the name of the Lord. Be free from every hex. Be free from every snare of the enemy tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak healing to your heart. High blood cholesterol. Be broken and be destroyed over your life. Sugar diabetes come out of the lives of the people today. In the name of the Lord. Be healed at the resurrecting power of the Holy Ghost. Come upon you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on God. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. I see the Lord touching venereal diseases right now. Venereal diseases are being healed right now. God is causing the demons that have attacked your organs to come out in the name of Jesus. Syphilis, gonorrhea, come on, warts. Come on, herpes. Come on, genital HIV. Come on, HIV and AIDS. Be destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I strike you right now with the sword of the Lord. Come out of the blood of the people of God. Let the blood transfusion of the Holy Ghost. Come now, 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 right now, right now, right now, right now. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, God is doing something for you. And those of you who will listen to the replay, and those of you who will listen over and over and over, the anointing is upon this project right here. This moment right here. Come on, come on, come on. My God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, yeah. I prophesy that this is a new day for you. And because it's a new day, God is going to call things to begin to happen into your life. The resistance, the delay, the sabotage, the stagnation, the antagonization of the enemy. God is dealing with some devils that's been attacking your life. It's a new day. It's a new day. This is a month of miracles. And I want you all to know that when we address it the right way, there is nothing impossible because God is a God of order. And he wants to beautify his bride, people of God. He wants to beautify you. It has nothing to do with the exterior. It has everything to do with the heart. Come on. He wants to beautify his bride. Yeah. He wants to beautify his bride. Come on, let him get into the heart. Oh my God, bless you. Bless you, bless you all. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you all. Get the books in the...
Bless you all. Uh, get the books. Huh? Get the books and oh. the CD. Let me show you what I have for you. I want you to remember that you can contact me. And we are working hard, amen, to talk to all of you who are inboxing. Those of you on YouTube, God bless you that's going to listen to this. Amen. Your life will be ever transformed by the power of God. And I know that this was your moment. Hallelujah. I know that this was your moment. I know that this is your moment. Those of you who did not get Dynamic Power of Prayer, here is the book. Amen. It's going to be a blessing to your life if you learn how to pray it. This is Spiritual Warfare Strategies. It's a beautiful book. And I'm working on part two now. Those of you who want to be in the Spiritual Warfare course with yours truly, Lady General, I will teach you all that I know. Give it to you so God can give me more. I want you to know that soon you'll be able to sign up on a website. You'll get uh, three hours, uh, individual hours with me. You can pick the time you want, and I'll teach and train you. Everything I have, everything I have will be poured into your life. So these are my new books. They are out. Order them. It's a great investment. It's a great investment into your spiritual walk. Wherever you are, it's a great investment. And so I would look into ordering and investing in your spiritual life so that your life can take on speed. Glory to God. I love you. Thank you so much. I had it. I enjoyed myself. I was blessed. I want you to listen again and I want you to share this on your walls for people to jump in. Those who are praying and asking God what's going on, they need to understand the legalities of the spiritual realm. It has worked for me and is working for me. I don't know any other way. I wasted many years of my life. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for sharing my videos. God bless you, Sister Deborah. Thank you all for your support. And I know that as you connect with me, what's on my life, amen, you will pull out, my God. And I'm telling you, you will benefit, hallelujah, as you begin, amen, to pull on everything in me. Come on. I'm going home empty. I'm giving out everything. Glory to God. Amen. And so I want you to continue to go up every day. Every day. You will have fresh manna from heaven. And your life will never remain the same. Come on. Hallelujah. Every gift, every support, every seed. I bless you. I thank you so much. It is going into the ground. Amen. I'm telling you, we're working on so much for the people of God. Because this is what we are called to do. We are designed to do it. And we were born to do it. And we bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will be glorified in your life. You will have salvation, healing, deliverance, prosperity. You will be fruitful in your generation and in your life, in your body. Your family is blessed. Glory to God. I love you all. And until we meet again, hallelujah, you be blessed above and beyond measure. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Yes. All the time, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. Mm. You're worthy of our praise. Come on. This is the reason why we do it. Amen. We love him so much. Receive the word and be blessed. Thank you, Sister Lynn, Sister Jessica. Thank you for coming on. God bless you all. You are tremendously lifted. Your head shall be lifted above your enemy. Hallelujah. Be blessed tonight.
Amen, my sister Deborah, Deborah, how you pronounce it, you are blessed, my dear. Receive from the Lord, there's an open heaven over your life, that's why you're crying. There's an open heaven, tonight is your night, tonight is your night, yeah, tonight is your night, yeah. Tonight is your night to receive from heaven, yeah. Receive from the master, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what you've been through, what you're going through. God is right there, yes, he is. My God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs>